Hey y'all. Hola mi gente. It's your favorite George Rican, and Kayla. Hey, today I'm doing another one of those quick and dash lunches. My husband is leaving for work and so just grabbing what I have on hand and I decided to um, do a classic. Who doesn't love burgers? So we are big grillers here. We love to grill, smoke, bake, cook, whatever. And we love the summer months and we love a good, good burger. And here in the South, you can grill out a lot more than probably other places. Um, just because the weather is always so nice. And today is no exception. It is absolutely beautiful. So, what I have on hand is that amazing pimento cheese that I made the other day for the corn stuffed corn sticks with the pimento cheese. And we have some bacon that I'm about to put in the oven. It's one of the fastest, um, easy ways for me to do bacon is I put it on a, like a cookie sheet, throw it in the oven. I don't have to worry about it. They all cook evenly, doesn't splatter, burn me, doesn't get grease everywhere. And then, yeah, that's doing its own thing while I'm doing nothing. I'm going to go ahead and pat these burgers out right now. We just have some ground chuck. It's what we had on hand. And I'm going to put a little bit of sofrito in there. You know, that wet spice I love to use, some fresh garlic, and then just all purpose, you know, seasonings. Adobo and coarse pepper. And that's all she wrote. We're going to get a lot of flavor with the uh, sofrito. And the sofrito, remember, has onions and garlic and bell peppers and cilantro, culantro, and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to put a little bit in there, not like a whole bunch, because I still want that beef flavor to come out. And then we're going to put bacon pimento cheese and then we're going to put a jam and there's you a georgia rican burger so now i'm going to just unseason my ground beef and i'll show you how i do that and then we'll put them on the grill and just build it and we'll get back here so there's our bacon ready to bake i preheated the oven to 375 and then just in a few minutes this will be done set it and forget it here we go we got our fresh minced garlic. That's about five cloves. Adobo, about at least one tablespoon. Same thing with the pepper. And I'll probably be ending up putting more. And two big spoons like this. Let me see if I can do it with my left hand. About like this, a little bit more of the sofrito in here. And then I'm going to mix it up with what God gave me my hands and i'll be right back there you go we got it all mixed up in here you can see a little bit of the green tidbits from the sofrito from the garlic and then once i pat these out um and of course i'll put i put a little bit more adobo in here once i pat it out then i'll put some of this um pure sea salt on it just kind of like a finishing salt just to get, um, boost up that beef flavor I don't I usually like to put it in here because adobo already has salt. That's why I don't, sometimes, you know, salt draws out moisture and um, I don't want it to get water. I want it to, the juices to stay in the patty. So, and of course, you know, you can make burgers so many different ways. But this is just uh, today's version of a, a real quick George Rican style burger, which is your patty with some of that bacon that we love we, uh, us Puerto Ricans, most Puerto Ricans love pork and then the pimento cheese that's right over there that we're going to slather on top of here another quick trip when I'm doing burgers is I'll line my serving tray with parchment paper or wax paper or anything like that I'll pat out my um patties my burger patties and I'll put it on top of the parchment paper. My husband will take this out, he'll grill it. Then we can just roll this off and throw it away and he has a serving tray, you know, for the cooked burgers right there. And we're not having to dirty too many things or whatnot. Okay y'all, so one of the things that I like to do with my meat is I just make even like meatballs, so you can see this, on my tray. So then I kinda, feel out like most burgers are going to come out the same size. I don't have like one of those fancy contraptions. Now I do have like a mini um, burger, you know, maker like sliders and stuff, but that's, that's not what we want. So I just kind of, some are a little bit bigger than the other. This was kind of like the leftover one. And then I'll just start forming my patty from 
that and I just kind of go around and stuff. Now I've I've seen where some people um, smush the middle, like make a little well, because it always kind of bumps up right there. And I've tried that. Sometimes it's okay, successful, but sometimes not. It's just a matter of like trying to make your patty spread out and be even, because it's going to shrink in size, and it's going to um, get a little fatter in, in the middle. So I just try to, you know, form it out, and with, and there you go. Then I'll just keep doing that. And so I'm kind of pressing and turning as I go. So it doesn't, you know, fall apart too much. We like fat, thick burgers around here. That was a family pack of over two pounds of ground beef. So they're a little bit more than quarter pounders, I think. Yeah, because I only have eight burgers here. So I'll just keep patting them out and I'll get back here in just a few. Okay, these beauties are done. Now I'm just going to, like I say, lightly dust them with the salt. So when they hit that grill, they'll be ready to go. And I'll put a little pepper as well and that way my husband knows they've been seasoned and he doesn't double season them and then when he flips them over he'll put a little salt on there and that's all these are ready for the grill let's check these out perfect i had already turned them over halfway through the cooking process so now i'll get some paper towels and drain them one thing I wanted to share with you guys is something we do here in the South is we save our bacon grease. So that's another um, good thing about putting it on a cookie sheet like this because it gathers all that bacon grease and it's easy to use one of the corners of the pan to pour it into your mason jar. And you might think like, why would you keep bacon grease? Well, it's like lard. And so, I mean, that's what lard is, is bacon fat, bacon grease. And so when you do that, you're able to put it in recipes that you would normally render bacon to season. Look at that, yummy bacon. So here's my mason jar full of bacon fat. So if you were making um, cornbread skillet, you wanted some bacon fat, or you normally use a recipe that you rendered the fat of bacon and then you took the bacon out and then topped it later on your dish, um, but you didn't have bacon, but you still wanted to uh, cook your potatoes in it or or saute your onions in it or whatever. Well, if you collect it, then you can have a tablespoon out and use it as your cooking grease. In moderation, of course, y'all. But this is something that I learned living here in Georgia for over 20-some years. And so, yeah, you can tell I cook a lot of um, bacon. I haven't had to use it, so I won't be saving the grease from today. But if I was, see how handy that corner would be just support in there. So look at all that yummy bacon fat. Also, I make certain salad dressings that have, it's like a bacon jam and you use bacon fat. And it is amazing. So maybe I'll show you guys that one other time. Well, we are ready to put these beautiful burgers on the grill. Do y'all hear that sizzle? You put a little well in the middle. So what is the secret to a good grilled burger? Having a good grill, a Weber. <laughs> oh, is that so? Yeah. We are not paid advertisers. We just love grill, yep. the Weber uh, brand. How long have you had Weber grant grill? Oh, for 20 years now. Yeah, we've been married 20 years, so... This is the only second Weber I've ever owned. Uh, they have good uh, warranties and everything, so very good grill. Our grill is sitting in our front yard right now because our back deck is getting stained. I can't wait. All right, when we started the burgers, I had the grill set at 400 degrees, and they've been on there for about... Uh, 
10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, and uh, just checked them. They're still sizzling good, so. So they're not ready to wanna, flip? You, know, you don't want to move them because you take a chance on them coming apart, but they're, they're looking good. Give them a few more minutes on that side. Awesome. About 25 minutes and we're ready to flip them. So. Ooh, let's see. Yeah, they're kind of puddling up there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Not good and juicy. And notice on the grill, you don't have any flare up. And that's one of the reasons why I like it at 400 degrees. So I tried it higher and cause a fire. Them yummy burgers are almost ready to get off the grill. We'll be back. Oh yeah, that's not like a good fried french fry. I don't fry often. I almost, I usually bake the french fries, but today I decided on frying them up. Extra crispy. Just the way I like them. Look at these beauties. I don't know about you guys, but I like to dust mine with some adobo, yep. We're probably gonna get tired of seeing this, but this is a Georgia Rican cooking thing. So it's all about southern food. Not all about, but some about southern food, Puerto Rican food, spices, and what we do. So you're gonna see a lot of adobo, sofrito, sazon, all that kind of stuff. Yum. Yum yum. These were buttered and grilled and it's ready to build. Alright. So let's get to building some burgers. So for my husband, he just wants it straight and simple. So I'm gonna put a pile of burger right there. Let's see. I think I should put the pimento cheese first. You can't see what I'm doing. Just a few pieces of bacon. I'll do another layer of bacon. I'm just piling and spreading this. You can do it as thick or as thin as you want. And then once you put the top, can you see that? Let me see what he thinks about this. Okay, I'm going to do mine a little bit different. I don't know about y'all, but I love buttered buns. I'm going to do it a little bit different. There's so many ways to do it. I'm going to put a little bit of... Spread a little bit this on the bottom. Just like a thin layer. Like that. Of the pimento, homemade pimento cheese spread. Then I'm gonna top it with a juicy burger, some bacon. Let's see. Now I'm gonna put a little bit more on top. And just because these look absolutely gorgeous, it's almost 
bigger than, let me get a smaller one maybe. It's bigger than my burger. These were huge tomatoes. A little salt and pepper. What do you think about that pimento cheese? Bacon pimento cheese burger. And you can put lettuce and different or with that. We also have some jams. We like kind of a sweet and savory combination. I have this four fruits preserve and this mango jalapeno jam, which my son probably will want some of this on his, even with the pimento, so that sweet, salty combination. Let me get a bite. This is huge. I don't know if you can see this. Is that not amazing? So, let me take a quick bite. I gotta smush this. I really don't want to smush it too much, but all right. It's mm. little juices coming out. Oh my goodness. Yep. This is a winner. Another good Georgia Rican burger. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You get the saltiness from the bacon. That tomato is perfect. And it's not even really like seasoned for tomatoes. And that pimento cheese gives it just enough kick because it has a cayenne in it. The pimentos, you got cream cheese, sharp, sharp cheddar cheese, and that hot, well cooked burger. You don't need nothing else. Look at how much it's trying to come off the end. Well, from another, I might see how the boys like it and show you in a minute. But from my kitchen to yours, when all right, so yes, my son wants his with jalapeno jelly. So we got spread of pimento cheese at the bottom. Big old, big old thick patty on top. Then the jalapeno jelly comes on top of that. I know you're like, oh my gosh, no. One of my favorite is this jalapeno jelly or apple jelly or um, peach jalapeno jelly, anything like that. Bacon, goat cheese, arugula. Woo! Talk about delicious. We're going to pile some bacon on here. Want a tomato? He wants a tomato too. These are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. A little salt and pepper. We're not going to be able to record this bite. This is huge. And when I made the pimento cheese originally, I didn't put a lot of mayo in it because we were stuffing it in those corn cakes. But then after I finished that video, then I added a little bit more mayo. So it'd be more like, you know, softer. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna get him some french fries. And it's... <laughs> Two thumbs up. That was a big bite. Tell me what you think. Very good and delicious. You're so sweet. There you heard it. Can't get no more confirmation.